Hello everybody to this new screencast about VA Smalltalk. Uh, in this screencast we want to talk about multitasking in VA Smalltalk. The first part of um, this topic is about the basics, which means process, process scheduling, and how this uh, all works in VA Smalltalk. Smalltalk processes have nothing to do with uh, native operating system execution threads or native execution processes. Smalltalk implementations are generally based on virtual machines, and these virtual, virtual machines are managing their own processes. Therefore, we can uh, say that uh, Smalltalk has only green threads. VS Smalltalk has one native execution thread within one native execution process. Therefore, a small completion in general will only use one core. Smalltalk code is executed in Smalltalk processes, which are instances of the class process. We have a very specific process, which is named the UI process. Smalltalk processes, as already said, are green threads. They don't map on native operating system threads. And the scheduling of all these Smalltalk processes are done by a Smalltalk scheduler, which is an instance of a class processor scheduler, and it, which is held in a global variable called processor. Remember, all these objects are Smalltalk objects. That, that means the whole management, the whole management of uh, process management in Smalltalk is done by Smalltalk. Because Smalltalk threads have nothing to do with uh, the native threads, uh, creation of small talk processes are very cheap and it is a very common feature of small talk to have hundreds of small talk processes running in within one image and this image is still responding this is one of the principles of small talk you may use it is allowed to use lots of threads creating a new small talk process is very easy you have a block and you send this block the message fork this message then sends a new process with the priority of the active process and it schedules uh, the, uh, the new process for execution by doing some stuff within the process scheduler. Uh, the process scheduler holds a process queue for each processing priority. Um, therefore, fork does the following thing. It adds the new process to the begin of the priority related processing queue and it moves the current process, which evaluates this fork, to the end of the priority-related process queue, which is the same queue. And then in, 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 uh, the process scheduler initiates a task switch. And therefore, this new uh, process, with the same pr uh, priority than the, uh, than the active process, has a very good chance to start it after execution of fork. As with all process priorities, also Smalltalk has different process priorities. Uh, normally use the user scheduling priority or the user background priority. These are the normal process priorities the users are working with. For our system purposes, we have uh, timing priority, high I.O. priority, low pri I.O. priority, or the system background priority. Now we come to the first example. In this example, we uh, create two background processes and uh, which are doing some very basic output into a queue and then we look what the content of the queue is. Now it's getting interesting. Remember, we have an active process already here, which is the UI process. The UI process evaluates all these statements here. The first two statements are just creating a queue and put a start uh, string into this queue and this is all done and executed by the UI process. The next statement is the creation of an additional background process and the creation of this process is done by the UI process which results into a new process which is added at the front of the process queue at the process scheduler. And at the end of fork uh, the, U, the UI process initiates a task switch and then it put itself, the UI process, it put itself at the end of the process queue. Then the task switch is initiated and the first process is found, which is the process 1. And therefore, the content of 2 times repeat are executed. If this is finished, the process 1 terminates and a new task which is initiated and we found the UI process again and the UI process 
does the same for the second uh, process, which uh, the, the old stuff uh, repeats itself, create a new process, put this process into the at the beginning of the uh, priority related queue within the process scheduler. Then a task switch is initiated, the UI process goes to the end of the process queue and the scheduler finds a new process, the process 2. The process 2 is executed, the output is put into the shared queue. The process 2 terminates somehow um, after it has done its work and then the only process available to run is the user I, the UI process. Therefore, a task switch is done again, the UI process becomes active and it puts a stop and uh, prints out all the content of the queue to the transcript window. In the next example, we change the first process by introducing a new statement called processor yield, which initiates a task switch at once. Adding processor yield to this program changes completely. The UI process creates the first background process and this results in the process 1 and the process queue. The process 1 starts working, uh, the UI process is uh, suspended, but the first statement is processor yield, which means please sleep your, uh, put yourself to sleep and uh, change the task. Therefore, process 1 is added to the end of the process queue and the switch is initiated and the only process found is UI process. The UI process gets activated again and has to create the second process. The second process is added because it's newly created at the beginning of the process queue. And now we have in the process queue two processes waiting, process 2 and process 1. The task which is initiated in the second fork, at the end of the second fork, fork and it will find the process 2. The process 2, process two gets activated and it outputs its 2 into the queue and then it terminates and then a task switch is initiated again. But now we have a process 1 at the beginning of the queue and therefore the process 1 gets activated and now the 1s are added to the queue. If the process 1 terminates, then only one process is leaving uh, is uh, left in the process queue, which is the UI process, and therefore the, uh, the both uh, last statements are executed. Now for the next example, we introduce an additional processor yield in the second Smalltalk process. And again, the behavior of the program changes by adding the processor yield in the second process. The interesting thing here uh, happens in the middle of the graphic. Uh, when processor 2 is active, it uh, also cr uh, started to do its work, but the first um, statement here is also processor yield. Therefore, processor 2 is put back into the process queue at the end. And now the most interesting thing is that processor 1 is activated and therefore uh, it outputs is, uh, its uh, ones to the queue. Now process 1 uh, terminates and uh, a task which is initiated and now the UI process is before uh, the process 2 and the process queue and therefore the UI process gets activated and does its both last statements. If the UI process has finished these statements, the UI process has nothing to do, but now the task scheduler sees there is still an, uh, an additional process there, which is the process 2. And now the process 2 becomes the active process and does its work. The both uh, two uh, strings are added to the queue. Therefore, if we would execute manually the, the queue do statement, after some time, we would see a very different output. We start to uh, redo the statement and therefore we can see 1-1 one, one, stop 2-2 two, two, and that's the output. As you can see, the main problem with multitasking is task switching. You never know when Smalldog does a process switch. For example, 
uh, you, if you do an output to the transcript window from a non-user interface process, a task switch may be initiated. Therefore, the behavior of your program may change if you introduce a transcript show into a background process. You have to be careful when some code uses semaphores. And in my guess, most of the base libraries are not thread safe. Don't depend or don't think that collections are thread safe or dictionaries are thread safe. If you want to have thread safe stuff, you have to use special classes which are made thread safe. Okay, that's for it today. In the next episode, we will talk about these special multitasking enabled classes which are available in VS Smalltalk and we talk about additional methods uh, usable with uh, Smalltalk processes. Bye bye.